Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it's time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're actually going to be talking about a software application that is actually cross-platform. So this could apply to Windows, Mac, or Linux. But we're going to be talking about five tips for better OBS streaming. So this is going to be a little bit different of a video uh, as far as the editing is concerned. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is try and get all this kind of figured out and situated. I don't think I'm going to do a good job of it, but we'll see what happens because I kind of have to show you the back end of what I usually see when I'm recording or streaming rather than um, just what I plan on showing you. So it will be a little bit on the uh, out there side, so uh, so it is. So we are gonna be talking about five tips for better streaming in OBS. We're not gonna be talking about the very basics about how to set things up. I actually have a few videos for that. I'll go ahead and link those um, in the description down below. Um, so that is certainly um, uh, something that will be coming around. So let's just go ahead and jump on in. I'm gonna be doing these one to five. There's no five to one countdown on this. Um, so we're just going to kind of jump on in here and uh, start each section and then kind of talk about it. So number one, we want to look at our files and our containers. It does make a difference which type of file you're using, what type of container you're wrapping that file in. Uh, as you're producing video, what there's an audio component, there's the video component, those all get wrapped up. There's a variety of different systems. So effectively, I'm going to be showing you um, I'm going to be showing you kind of what, uh, what I see in the light of everything here. So uh, if we go over here and look at my actual studio setup, you'll see on this particular one here, which is specifically at my top five, um, I have a variety of ones for green screening, my main capture, tinfoil hat time, life in Linux, um, and I'm on the top five now. Um, what you want to do is looking at your settings option and uh, looking at that settings option going down into your uh, output and uh, inside of your recording output what we're going to be able to see is container formats here. You're going to be talking about your encoders down here and I think I'm going to be talking about codecs and encoders a little bit more later. Uh, so pretty much we're just going to output to the file and you're going to select your container format. Your container format will effectively determine what type of file is being output. And I don't want to change any of this, but we have a variety of different things. Um, you should research your different things. I generally just use Mattress Oak, uh, I don't know whatever this one's called, uh, Metroska uh, for everything. It's, the, it's just a, uh, a default open source video uh, format. So this is what I use um, and I don't really want to change any of that. That's going to produce our um, that's going to produce our file and uh, it, it just tells us right here what is our path and the path is actually just going to be in this case I'm just using my main home directory. So this is the file here in progress. It's the one without a thumbnail. Uh, simply because it's, um, uh, it is uh, still being recorded. So that's kind of the file you're using. You just want to pick a container and understand that some container types, if the streaming is interrupted, it will corrupt the file. And so with the file being corrupted, um, you, it will kind of uh, produce a situation where you have to go back through. And that's kind of why I like this container type because if the system is like if power went out right now, I would still have up to this point in time, I might need to repair the file, but it is still a repairable thing. And something like VLC could indeed repair that. Uh, so with that, we're going to jump on over to the next one uh, because I'm going to use a lot of the other setting screens here for each of these items. Number two, we're going to be looking at codecs. So, of course, the codecs are what are you actually using? We selected our container, which kind of gives us what our file type is. Uh, what the codecs are going to give us is this is going to determine how is it actually going to, uh, going to select everything. So here's our different encoders. And once again, if I mess with anything here while I'm recording, that could cause some serious problems. So I'm gonna be careful here. Of course, FLV is your flash video. There's um, H.263, 
Uh, you'll see there's some JPEG there. There should be some MPEG in there. There's MPEG video types. MPEG 4, of course, is a video types. If you pick the wrong one, you can end up with just audio or just video, uh, and you can mess a lot of things up. Once again, I'm just going to use kind of the default, uh, which is the LibX264. That gets you an H.264 uh, encoder system. Uh, MPEG-4, I think, will give you another situation where if the if it is interrupted, it will um, uh, it will kind of break the file. So I'm just setting mine up by using the LibX264 setup with the Matrosoka manual talk <laughs> Matroska uh, container, and uh, that produces a system for me that that works out uh, very well in my case. Number three, we want to go ahead and utilize filters. The reason filters are important is my color might be a little goofy or I get some other weird situation. So uh, just before I switch over, um, I can come into my filter and I can hit my color correction. And this is my color correction turned off. This is my color correction turned on. Of course, I can do weird stuff with the colorations. Um, and it will go ahead and uh, record all those. Of course, here's our contrast. There you go. You can film it this way. <laughs> that looks kind of evil. I should probably not use that contrast. It's a little crazy. Um, and then, of course, I can make it brighter or darker, depending. Uh, saturation. We can go back. Or we can just go really super saturated. You thought I had blue eyes before. Um, so... This is kind of where we have a lot of control inside of your filters. You just kind of want to make sure that uh, uh, that you're uh, utilizing your filters of a uh, to, to a de great great degree. So uh, once again, to show you kind of what this is going to look like, um, there's filters for everything. So on this one here, what I'm using for a variety of filters on my camera itself. The filters that I have, I have the sharpen filter, which will allow me to sharpen the image out. Of course, this is too sharp. Uh, this gets a little bit of blur, but just adding a small hinge of sharpness, not so much you can really spot it, but it gives it just a little bit of a tinge on the, uh, on the camera focus there. Um, as far as the borders, um, the borders is actually the fuzzy border that I have. So if I turn that off, you'll see the borders go back to uh, stagnant and this is turned back on. What I'm actually using is a file, and that file there, let me show you what that file looks like in case you wanna produce a border like this. Uh, let's see, documents and video fades, and I'm using the camera border.jpg. So this is literally what this border looks like. It's a white image here, and it is faded out uh, into the center and then effectively what I'm doing is I am cropping out everything that is white so then you'll see it fades out to borders so you can see we're fading out the white if I were to fade out for example the black then that would give me this and I would just kind of have the same kind of inverted situation but I don't really want that to be the case so let's just go ahead and uh, change that back to white if I can I think I messed myself up where am I Give me my, select my color. Oh, Lordy. There it is. <laughs> like, where are you? You vanished. There we go. Okay. Um, so I'm doing that. Of course, here's the color correction. And then if I wanted to enable the green screen, I do have a green screen enabled on pretty much everything. Um, I usually just turn it off on everything except the green screen. So the way this one would actually work, is uh, in this case here, I just select whatever happens to be green. So here what I'll actually do is if I select my shirt, um, it'll kind of fade out like this and then I can select my similarity and then you'll kind of see it just basically turns it into a kind of a, a green type or uh, there you go, Arr, that looks a little creepy. Um, or if I just do a color select and I pick the maybe the just the red, now what I can do is with the greater similarity, I can just kind of block out just myself and I can put something goofy back behind here. So uh, closing this, let's see, 
there's a green screen and then you'd actually let me just go back over turn my filters back on hit my green screen and go similarity let's see let's see if I uh, there might actually be something else behind that which is interfering oh, no there it is you can kind of see what happens there let me turn back to this so you can see I've got the keyboard over my neck there you go um, it looks like I'm using maybe my old Ubuntu image on that so that's kind of how uh, uh, how the the filters are going to work and there's a variety of different filters we're just going to turn that off you can see you can do um, chroma key is what we're using for the green screening color corrections colors crop crop and pad will just kind of crop various things out there's scroll there's a variety of different things so utilize filters to your advantage to produce yourself a uh, a much better uh, a much better situation Number four, utilize your buffers, your cache, and your bit rate for producing good quality video or good quality stream. So once again, we're going to have to go back over to uh, my main desktop view over here. And uh, with my main desktop view, going back into our settings, and where you're going to find these at is your output. Now under streaming, you'll see I'm collecting 5,000. You, you want to make sure that you're picking a number here that is a little bit, I mean, maybe even a lot below your upload stream. So, of course, I pay a little bit extra for some internet that has some pretty good upload. So, I can go up as far as five. My buffer is 2,500. I should probably increase this a little bit more. Essentially, the higher the buffer that I have, if I match my buffer to this, and it's basically going to delay everything a second, but uh, that's actually going to probably produce a little bit better situation. It will not buffer on your end as much if I'm streaming, if I use a higher buffer size. Keyframes, um, I'm using four on this because this used to be what's required for YouTube. I think that they've gotten rid of this, that it will work if you set it to auto now, uh, but four still works fine for me, so I don't bother changing it. And then the CPU preset, um, the higher utilizes the less um, the higher CPU. I just use the ultra fast because I'm not really concerned about my CPU usage. You can see in the bottom corner, I'm still only using 11% CPU right now, so I don't really care. Of course, for recording, this is important because this is going to determine are you uploading well. So the way the way you're uploading and versus the way you're recording kind of gets you uh, kind of some differences because of, as we're streaming, where we are going to is actually doing all the encoding and on its side rather than than our computer side. So when I'm recording. I want to make sure that I have a pretty high video bit rate. If you drop this pretty low, you'll get a small file, but you can get something really horrible looking. Um, I use 20,000. You could actually even go a lot higher than that to get the highest quality. Think of this number, the highest, the higher the number, the better quality, but also the higher the number, the largest, the larger the file size. I use this because it gets me a really high quality and I even encode it on Caden Live with slightly less quality than this which is actually why my, my raw footage is actually a little bit higher quality than what I actually upload on YouTube. Um, and I just kind of do that uh, just, just because. Um, just because I, I, I like having the smaller file sizes because that's also what gets stored in my archives. And I, and I don't care if I have infinitely better, perfect, pristine quality as much as I care about being able to store everything in a cost-effective manner. So I do record at much higher bit rate in case for some reason I want to have a higher quality video in that case. Uh, this gives me the ability to do that. Or if your storage becomes infinitely cheaper and I can record all my raw footage, uh, recording high raw footage, that sounds good. Um, so that is utilizing your, uh, your, we looked at the buffers, we looked at the cache, and we looked at the bit rate. Um, and so uh, I guess maybe we just looked at buffers. I don't know why I had cache in there. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, but regardless, these are good setups. If you are paying attention, you want a good setup, you know, I've spent quite a bit of time getting into uh, these items here. Um, now, before we jump into our number five, I'll remind you, you can help support me over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M. -M. You can also check out my related, um, my related page, thinklifemedia.com. There will be a link for that in the description down below. That's actually the place where you can support me 
um, directly without going through Patreon if you want to do that. Um, if you have a Patreon account, you can get an account on Think Life Media. That's where I post some extras and things like that. Uh, you can check me out on uh, shop.switch2linux.com if you want to pick up something like this cool mouse pad or uh, t-shirts, coffee cups, things like that. You can find all that at shop.switch2linux.com and all the other ways you can help support me is at switch2linux.com forward slash support. And number five, let's talk about correcting audio sync issues. Um, every now and again, I'll run into these. It has to do, I think, with the fact that if the, my cable or something in the microphone is degrading, then I might have a delay. The, the peak ir irony is I might still have a delay recording with my new setup since I moved in the new office. I thought I noticed a slight bit of sync. It's probably not really noticeable, but there might still be a slight bit of audio sync issues. Um, so let's talk about how to fix that. And my apologies if this video is actually out of audio sync because I haven't resynced for a little while. So in order to do this, what you are going to need to do is uh, from your main board here, click in on your gear and go down to advanced audio properties. And you'll see what I have here is this sync time. So what I wa actually want to do is I actually record this and then record a video and then what I do is I just keep on manipulating the syncs. So right now I'm actually offsetting my sync by 250 milliseconds. And what I do is I do something like this where I can easily enunciate and spot what's going on. So I'll look into the camera, I'll record one, two, three, four, five, check, check, check. Record that and then Play that back and see if it's synced, is it not synced? If it's not synced, you might need to come up here and just change your numbers a little bit. And for some reason, I'm having a hard time highlighting it. So if I were to do that, push close, I might be off sync now. I'm not sure. Check one, check two, check three, check four, check five, check, check, check. Um, now, I've never actually tested if I can sync these and change these while I'm recording as I'm doing right now. I'm not sure. Last 250 milliseconds was just about perfect. And so that's what I'm using. But you're going to use these advanced systems. Um, also, another thing to note in here is that if you need to listen back and do any monitoring, you have these options now. These are in the more recent versions of OBS. If you're running an older version, uh, particularly on Linux, this is something that was just ported to Linux within the last couple versions. You have the ability to monitor, to not monitor, or to monitor and output. So I could monitor how the whole thing is going, but not send it to the video file. I could send it to the video file, but not monitor it, or I can monitor it and send it to, uh, send it to the file. So those are all options that you have within these, uh, within these settings. Of course, you can pan things. You can adjust your volume settings and things like that, which is essentially the same thing as down in this slider bar. So those are five advanced uh, user tips on OBS. Hopefully that helps you record better streams or better pre-recorded videos. Um, with that being said, thanks for watching this video. Check out the links in the description down below for how you can help support the channel. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.